latest van tour of the Volkswagen Crafter. Uh, you've been keeping track of our Instagram and my, uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, we've been doing some progress videos and lots of pictures, but here's the, uh, the full tour. Um, so yeah, just start off from the front of the van um, and we'll work our way back. We'll go up onto the roof rack as well and have a look at everything we've added up there. Um, so in the front, we've added uh, a full set of Remus blinds. Uh, they're privacy blinds all round, so they're um, on both sides, really quick and easy to use, and they're held on by magnets. And then you've got the same um, on the driver's side, and then you've also got um, one that goes across the whole windshield, um, just with these little catches here. And you just pull straight across, and it just magnetises in the middle, really easy. Um, they're made over in Germany, um, really easy to install. Um, the windshield one is quite tricky, but you know, as they're made in Germany, they are really good quality. Um, we've also installed an Android head unit in, in the van. Um, you've got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, um, basically a, an Android tablet. Gives you all sorts of different functionality. Um, and you've also got the rear view camera as well. Uh, which is quite handy so not wide in just when you're in reverse just in case you want to have a look back there you know without having to put it in gear um, and then we've also put the the first leisure batteries underneath the seat in the front here um, so we had to cut the center section out of the out of the driver's box basically um, and and you know to allow space for it because it's quite a big battery um, in total the van's got two uh, 220 amp hour explorer batteries um, which should be more than enough on those uh, two 300 watt solar panels on the roof uh, so it should be you know more than enough when they're off grid um, and then in, inside here we basically decided to do a kind of hobbit style almost um, storage space above the cab because the crafters haven't got any storage above above the, the driver's area so we are kind of we built this whole area basically um it's just got its own little light inside as well and then also tongue and grooved and stained the whole ceiling uh, which I think just really adds the aesthetic um, as the uh, the seats are all on swivels as well so you can uh, swivel these all the front seats round and you've got a continuation of the wood above your head all the way down the van um, and then we also um, boxed in the uh, back of the seats uh, I think it's a shame that a lot of conversions I've seen where they you know they leave all of the metalwork exposed of the, of the actual seats in the front um, so we decided to continue the timber down um, and then box in the whole back of the, the seats basically and they've also got some additional um, rear speakers um, obviously connected up to the head unit in the front um, and we also boxed in the additional bench seat um, as the owners have got two kids they wanted to be able to have um, you know an extra two seats in the back with you know with uh, also with a you know a certified uh, lap belt here as well um, and boxed in the entire um, sort of base uh, base box of the seat um, and we've also put in a really nice curved uh, removable table um, that flows really nicely with the with the shape of the wall and just kind of curves around. Um, obviously, this is removable. Um, and then we also put in a nice uh, distress popper uh, two gang USB socket, which is connected to the inverter. Um, that's the only two, 240 socket in the van, um, as there's 12 volt USB sockets throughout. And then we've also done some curved uh, window frames rather than the kind of standard I've seen in a lot of vans where they've made just a rectangular frame around the windows. Um, obviously these built-in windows have got a curve in them so you, I think to make it look right you, we had to do a curved frame so um, yeah it was quite hard work but um, yeah I think it was well worth it actually in the end. Um, and we've also got two 12 volt dome, dome lights there. Um, and the uh, lighting in the van, um, we've basically done it in three zones. So there's uh, front, middle and rear. Uh, the front down light switch is here. Um, and then we've got another for the shower water pump. And then the USB sockets uh, that are in the back are on, uh, on a switch as well because they've got a sort of glow around them basically. So at night you know, we thought it was um, important to be able to switch those off and also just you know save on, a, on, on power basically when, when, the, uh, when they're not using them. Uh, so nice and be switched off there. Um, then in here we've got all the kind of the 
kind of utility cupboard of the van basically so we've got a full Kali instant hot water boiler uh, the 10 litre model uh, with the flue going out the roof um, and then we've also got the solar charge controller which is a 60 amp hour MPPT unit um, which I've actually used in my van if you have a look at um, the van tour of my van it's the same unit I've used and I know it works really well um, and then we've also got the newer Propex uh, digital thermostat as there's an underbody HS2211 uh, heater um, and they've also got a uh, 25 litre of Vegeta underneath um, which is just control here you'll just turn it on and off there and you can control the lighting with the other button uh, the good thing with the, the new Propex thermostat, it's got a timer on it so you can set it to turn on and what temperature you want it to go to. So if you're away from the van for the day, you can set it to turn on an hour before you come back and whatever temperature you like and it'll be the van will already be warm when you get back. Um, we've also got underneath, probably won't get used very much but this is just where the inverter um, is based, the battery charger, a 15 amp uh, Sealy battery charger which is connected to the leisure hookup. Um, and then another Explorer battery um, and various bits of pipe work which is obviously running up to the boiler and all the fuses done for this side of the van. Um, there is another 12 volt uh, fuse box on the, uh, on the passenger side which is connected underneath. Um, I like to do a sort of under, uh, un under, under floor um, sort of channel basically for all the pipe work and wiring that needs to be connected so you've not got anything visible. Um, and then um, we've got the shower. So we've got this really lovely louvered door. This is on ball bearing sliders um, and it's got a kind of locking mechanism so when it's shut it won't slide open when you're driving. And then in the shower uh, we, we put in a Dometic uh, uh, seat slider window. Um, we're just yet to get a shower curtain in there, but that will basically protect all of the kind of um, innards of the, of, the, of the window itself so that water doesn't get down behind and all of the skin. Um, the, uh, the, and all the, the hot water system is basically done with um, copper pipe and compression fittings. Uh, so you simply just turn this pipe on and then the shower will just fi fire up. Basically the boiler will sense a, a kind of uh, flow of water through it and um, yeah, and you'll get instant hot water. It should be only a couple of seconds um, as it's a very short run from, from the boiler to the, to the shower. So it should fire up basically immediately. Um, and then there was also another copper rail inside for the curtain, so that will protect the louver door when it's closed. Um, and then um, we went with a, a CRX uh, 110 fridge. So the same as I've got in my van again, this is one of the really uh, the much bigger models, um, you know, substantially bigger than a CRX 50. Um, but they're great, um, you know, you can run them and, and they will, you know, you can keep ice and all sorts in the freezer and they work just as well as a house fridge in my opinion. Um, and we've gone for a, a, a sort of separate two burner hob um, and a really big 440 by, I think it's, yeah, 440 by 440 and 220 deep um, stainless steel sink um, and a really nice sort of antique effect uh, mixer tap, um, which is obviously a house unit, not a, not a caravan unit. So. Uh, we're running a shore flow um, inline uh, water pump with an accumulator so as soon as it feels it senses a drop in pressure the um, the, the tap will you know it, it will feed the system basically so you don't need any kind of uh, 12 volt uh, motorhome style um, um, tap that's, that's connected um, then we've also got a removable uh, chopping board so just in case they want to they want to give it a clean it's fully removable um, and just only fits in one way luckily so they can't can't get it in the wrong way and then we also went for a really nice mosaic tiled uh, splash back um, it, again if you've seen um, the you know my van um, you know I've got a fully mosaic tiled shower and the, the splash back along the kitchen I think really finishes it off so I thought it was really important that we included one in this van um, and they've got you know, an enormous um, workspace here so even with the two fold down beds up you've still got full use of the whole kitchen um, and then we've got obviously it's a four it seats five, five up the front and we can sleep four in here so we've got uh, two fold down beds um, for the kids so these these links are chassis mounted to the ribs of the van um, and then we've got um, we've obviously got four inch memory foam mattresses each um, and each one has got their own porthole window and USB socket and their own little light. Um, so the same here as well. So 
Yeah, yeah they, I mean they're great, these, these port hole windows, it's basically giving them a picture window each so the kids have got their own proper little sort of bed space, um, you know, again with their own light. Uh, they've both got double USB sockets. Um, this is the, the, when I said about the switch earlier, the, these have got a blue glow around them so this just means we can have them switched off at night. Um, and then, yeah, you just simply just pop them up and, and latch them on, they're really easy. Um, and the chains actually, when they're driving, don't actually make any noise at all really, so they could be removed if you wanted to, if, if you wanted them out of the way, but I think they kind of add to the aesthetic of the van actually. And then at the back, um, we thought it was really important to, to finish off the rear. I, I see a lot of people just do a bit of tongue and groove above and below the, the rear windows. Um, it's not something I wanted to do given the framing that we've done on all the other windows. Uh, I thought it was important to, to kind of include a real, just really finish the back of the van off. So we've gone for some timber down the middle that meets. You've got really small gaps so you don't see any of the rubber. Um, and then we've done some really nice framed windows on either side as well um, that kind of lines up really nicely with the, with the worktop. Um, and they'll be putting, um, when the owner's just deciding on what they want to do in terms of the curtains and things, we'll probably put a rail on the inside so they can have a curtain they can push across um, and have, have closed at night. Um, we've also framed, if you can just about see there, we've um, framed the, the door handle as well. So um, yeah, when you've got the, got the doors open at the back, it just looks really well finished. Um, and then we've got the double bed here, basically. Um, so this is obviously the, the extra piece of the bed, which comes down here. Um, underneath, there is another piece of ply that you can, you can basically just flip out. And then the other, other piece of the, the bed just simply just comes down. And then you've got a double. And yeah, still enough headroom when these are down as well um, to get in and out. Um, Back. Obviously, the um, the owners are uh, yet to get them upholstered, so they're just deciding on a fabric at the moment. Um, that is something we can offer as well. Um, but the, the owner's wife is quite keen to to kind of put her personal touch on it, basically. So, so yeah, during the day they'd have this this you know this is probably the setup they'd have during the day, and then in the evening the kids can have their beds down, and there's still space for for five people up the front to have dinner, they can still um, you know, still cook and everything whilst the beds are down. Um, oh yeah, and there's also a, uh, there's a, a Thetford duplex oven here. So we've recessed that in a little bit just to allow for the way the bed folds out. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, it's worked really well that it's sucked away down this end. Um, and then we've got all the various cupboards and everything along the kitchen here. Um, and then what we do now, we'll go around the back and get the doors open. So we've put a Rhino um, rear ladder um, and a full Rhino roof rack um, up the top. Just show you the van with the back doors open. It gives you a really nice view up the van from the rear. facing camera for the, for the Android head unit there as well. Um, so yeah, once the, once the, the, uh, the mattresses are all been upholstered, I think it'll let people all finish stuff with yeah, it. Gives, you a, gives it a really nice look, I think, with the, the wood panel doors and the frame windows. Um, the, uh, all of the, uh, the water pump and the tank drain is all down here. Um, you've also got a cut-off um, valve here for the water tank as well um, and the water filler. Um, so yeah, they've just literally got to lift up the, the bed frame as it's hinged here, so you can still lift up the entire base basically. Um, not that you probably need to get in there, there is a bit of storage in there, but um, predominantly it's just got a low full power system in there and the, and the water pump. Um, they've got a 25 litre water tank. On the roof. So we've got 
to 300 watt solar panels. And then we've also got the Max Air roof fan. Uh, this model you can drive with it, uh, whilst, uh, have it open whilst you're driving. Um, we had to make some changes to the roof rack to allow for the flue and for the roof fan. Um, so we've used aluminium box section to reinforce the, the roof rack. Um, we've also got a Fiamma uh, roof box. Uh, this is a really big unit. You can fit absolutely loads in there. They'll be keeping their waste hog in there. Um, and then we've also created this really nice L-shaped roof deck. The kids were really keen to, to sit up on the roof. Um, and then inside, uh, just quickly, I'll just show you inside the sliding door. Um, just wanted to make sure that we had finished off the sliding door properly in keeping with the rest of the van. Um, so yeah, the tongue and groove is all in line and just continues nicely along um, and meets up with the sliding door. Uh, rather than painting it white, we thought it would be better to, to stain it to make it really a, more of a feature. Um, it's got this really lovely curve down and where it meets the, the rest of the wall. And again, we've got allowance for a curtain rail in there. We're probably going to use some um, copper brake line, actually, which it, as it bends round, it'll meet, sort of work well with the curve. Um, and then, yeah, have another, another rail just on the inside there so they can have a curtain that they slide across. Um, the end of the van tour. Um, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, also keep keep an eye on our Instagram. I post a lot more on Instagram, um, you know, on, on a daily basis, just sort of showing all sorts of little bits and bobs of all of our builds. Um, we've also got a uh, Mercedes Vario library bus um, that I'm going to be doing a video um, series of, and that's going to be mine and my other half's new home. So the uh, sort of Ford Transit that's in my um, my van tour video of my own personal van, um, that's probably going to get reshelled, and, and we're going to be um, yeah fully kissing out a Mercedes Vario library. Um, it's about nine meters long, so stay tuned for you know probably lots and lots of videos of that whole build process. It's going to take a long time alongside um, cust customer builds, um, so it's probably going to be just an evening and weekend or whenever we've got time, sort of thing. Um, but yeah, please uh, like, subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.